Thank you very much. Um, I did just joke that I hadn't thought of what I was going to say because that's a lie. I prepared the other day, and then on the way over, I decided to just change the whole thing. So it's written here. So you're getting something brand new. All right, let's first, why are we even here? Let's talk about the big problem. The big problem is the American Legion right now has a membership deficit of a lot. You hear people talk about the almost 2 million, the little over, we're nowhere near 2 million. We're now kind of wishful thinking to say 1.8 million. I've heard it's, it can at any given time be 1.6 million. So we have, a, we have a big membership problem. And a lot of people in my department like to say things like, we need to get out there and knock on doors, invite them down for a cookout. We are hundreds of thousands of members away from having the luxury of inviting our friends over. We need a mass market campaign. We need to reach people who haven't been reached before, who don't know any of us in there, because quite frankly, we don't have a lot of us in here, so we don't know everybody. And how do we do, how does a post do that? How does a department do that when we have that circular problem of you need members to make money but you need money to find those new members, right? So that's the big problem. And the big problem is right now, we have a lot of uh, divergent ways of thinking about how to do it. We, we, can't, we, we have the race car thing, only national can do something like that. You can't do that in your post. Uh, national has these nationwide mailings. National can do that. You can't do that in your post. National does things on Facebook and Twitter. Only net, wait, you can do that in your post. But you have to think about it. And you can't get bogged down in the conversations that, that kind of deflect you from the point. You can't listen to people say, young people don't use Facebook anymore because it's a false, it's a false, uh, it's, I almost said a false myth, but that would make it true. It's a myth. If you look at Facebook numbers, they're, quite, they're more than the, the next three combined. And Facebook owns two of those, Instagram and WhatsApp. Do they go to them as often? No, they check in a couple, three times a week because they're scrolling through uh, what I call simple content. They're scrolling through pictures and short videos because it just feeds. It feeds something. I get caught up in it. I do that first thing I do when I wake up in the morning, which means I should probably get married. So <laughs> So <laughs> that's a myth. <laughs> so the, the the idea that we the idea that the young people don't go there is not it's not true. My post on we have a private Facebook group. Every generation is on there to say that old people don't use the internet. Also a myth. They're on my Facebook group complaining about things. I have the young people on there complaining about things. So everybody has that in common, right? They have a place to go and complain about things. Now, I can't spend too much time on the problem because I have, I have less than five minutes to go on each of these. So the big picture is this. Don't get bogged down in the technology of these things until you've figured out some other things. Every bit of communication, including including recruitment, advertising, whatever, is telling a story. If you're not telling a story, you're wasting your time and your money. Every picture you take should tell a story. If you do have a cookout and you have some people from different generations, you have some female uh, veterans, you have veterans of different backgrounds, get them in a picture and don't have them stand shoulder to shoulder holding up a hot dog because they're at a barbecue, right? Tell a story. They're laughing, they're talking to each other. You're having intergenerational conversations. Those are the pictures I look for. If I take a picture of you somewhere in the hall, I, I, I'll take the picture when you see me do it and you want to pose with your buddy. I'll take that picture. That's, the one, that's not the one I'm going to use. It's the one you didn't see me take. It's one of you interacting, so having that energy to show, right? So the big picture, before you make that ad, tell a story. Every one of your posts has a story. Does anybody's post do anything worthwhile? Nobody? 
I see one. Two, two people do worth, three people do worth wild things. So the rest of you need to tell their stories and pretend it's yours. And what that comes down to is I ask, I always ask a couple of things when I do membership workshops, and this is a blend of technology and membership. And if you, if you, if you hesitate to answer or you answer no, you need to rethink, you need to rethink your post before you spend any time or money on advertising it. Number one, is our community better because my American Legion post exists? If you can't say yes, or you hesitated, go back and fix that. Number two, is every veteran I come in contact with a candidate to have their life enhanced by membership in the American Legion? If you had to pause or you had to say no, you need to go back and fix that. Because that's the reality of what gets members. Not, it's not, do we have a logo or brand? That's why we can't get members. Or every, every person's pet peeve I know it's their pet peeve because they end the sentence with, that's why we can't get new members. <laughs> but that's not the reality. That's the story you ch you're choosing to tell people. If you say that out loud to people that, first of all, you joined. You joined and you stay. So saying that something that you don't like is the reason why people wouldn't join means that you're doing something you hate. That's weird. So the story that you're choosing to tell kind of dictates the narrative and how it's being received by others. I, I would never tell that story. I only tell positive stories. I tell positive stories about the volunteerism that we do. I tell positive stories about the, the way we thrived through uh, uh, the COVID virus. I tell positive stories about even my own personal experience. I personally experienced the camaraderie and the love that this organization gives to its fellow members. You can tell that story in pictures that you put on Instagram and that you put on Facebook. Now the reality with Facebook and, and, and Instagram is they're there to make money. You can put it up there. The algorithm will show it, not to all of your friends, by the way, It'll show it to your friends. If your friends then like and comment on it, you're tweaking the algorithm in real time, and it will then show up on more people's pages. But then you're on the you're in there and you're on the phone telling people, "Could you go like my comment, please?" And that can too be weird, and it's also not likely that they're going to take that call very often. So if you don't want to be blocked. Um, don't do that. It, it hurts feelings, I can tell you. So the cool thing, the cool thing about Facebook and why it was, it was married with membership for this session, it's the same reason why, wait, I'm making assumptions. Who thinks Facebook is creepy? Who's ever, have you ever shopped for something in a store and had ads for that show up? I didn't type in a search. How the hell did they do that? It's creepy. But the reason why it's creepy is the reason why it's brilliant for us. <laughs> I can search for left-handed, nearsighted veterans that live within five miles of my house and their address ends in an odd number. I can probably get that specific. And it costs me pennies. The ROI is paid for with one membership. So, when you're telling these stories, remember the stories we told at the beginning of this. Now you, have to, now you have to get it out to the people. You can put it on Facebook and some of your friends will see it, but some of your friends already know you're in the American Legion and they already think that it's at least a thing that you don't hate, so it's probably pretty good. But to get it out there, you have to advertise, you have to boost that post. That requires an investment I saw you twitch. That means money, I know. But it's not a lot of money. When we have a big event and I want, uh, when I want people in the area to come by, I will literally put 20 bucks. At the most I've ever put 50 bucks. And I mean, you're getting tens of thousands of impressions for that money. Think of a billboard. Costs a lot more than 20 bucks 
cost a lot more than 50 bucks. And how do you know how many people read it? You don't. Facebook can tell you how many clicks you got, who clicked it, and uh, you, you're getting your return on investment in real time. Actually, about a, a half hour delay. So you can see how effective that advertising is. You can run two ads, what we call A-B a, comparison. And you can see which ad performs better and your risk, it can literally be as low as a dollar. I would probably do $5 so that you have an adequate data pool. And if any of you think that $5 is too much of a risk, Henry will pay for it for you. <laughs> he's very generous. <laughs> I said that because he's on his phone. They hear me. All right. So if you, if you put that information out there and you, and you boost it, you have to be ready because people will contact people will want to contact you and we talk about and we skip the gun all the time by me telling you that those options are available and how you need to tell the story and uh, all of that but we s always skip the step that you need to be prepared it's like when I used to do I IT security yes I was a nerd and yes I used to have a job <laughs> and I would go in and I would I would do these I would do all this stuff on their computers and then I would look at their front door that I could, I could unlock with a real strong hand turn. I'm like, it doesn't do you any good to have great software on your computer if I can blow your door down like the three little pigs. Well, the pigs didn't blow the door down, right? The wolf did. If I could wolf blow your door down, it doesn't matter how secure your network is. Because I'm taking a piece of equipment physically off the network. So if you're not ready, having all these people contact you or try to contact you is a waste of time and money. I don't care if it's $20. I don't want to waste your time and money. So you need to be prepared. Is your find a legion or yeah, find a legion post up to date? Is it a number there or is it for a commander from three years ago, their email address? Commander Jeff, 24A at yahoo.com. That guy is no longer there. That address is no longer valid. Is the phone number still active? These are low-tech things you need to do before you get into high-tech solutions. What's your post look like when they stop by? Has the grass been cut? Does it need a fresh coat of paint? Great volunteer opportunity for people, especially the young people that you seem to be looking for. The first picture I have of the American Legion was my post is getting ready to go through a renovation. It's a great story picture, by the way. It's me standing there like I'm, a, like I'm on a fire hero commercial. I've got the goggles covered in dust, sledgehammer in my hand, because we did our own reno to save a couple bucks. We knocked down the walls ourselves. I did that within a month of joining the Legion. They got me in there. I said, this is kind of cool. And it's not a meeting. And I got to do something. I got some anger out, let's be real. My therapist appreciated that. <laughs> I don't have a therapist. It's probably a tender date. So, it's, uh, so it's, it's what you do to prepare for the onslaught that you're going to get when you do this right. So you got your posts prepared. You're ready for them to be able to contact you. Do you have people whose front of mind is paying attention to new people coming in and making sure they're welcomed? and said hello to because that I hear that complaint all the time that post wasn't welcoming to me I will never ever walk into another American Legion post again make sure that doesn't happen that's low tech now when you get all that together now you're creating situations you're creating scenarios with stories that need to be told you're telling stories of volunteerism that your post does do you do that you're telling stories of hanging out together as an organization. Does your post do that? Do you have that camaraderie? You're telling stories about how you're doing the four pillars without saying the four pillars because nobody knows what that means unless they're in the organization. You tell specifically what you do. Yeah, we have this thing, that, you know, it's really important in the American Legion to support children and youth. So we do the oratorical contest 
that the name says what it is. We do boys in uh, our auxiliary that's girl state, creating mock government prepares them for life and future and making sure our country doesn't implode when you get older, probably a benefit for you. So you have all of these things that you can tell these stories about that then go back to your pitch that you're going to say, right? So you're getting that, now you need, now you get that information out there to the right people. Do you know who you want in your post? Do, you, do any of you actually know who you want in your post? Do you have a target, target market? <laughs> that's, that's, unfortunately, that's not a search criteria on Facebook right now. <laughs> we'll just take anybody. But you can say, you can be very broad with it. But if you're in a in populous place like I am, if I got very broad with it, the numbers would get ridiculous. So you're very rural? You could literally just say you want veterans within so many miles of an address. And uh, so people who identify as veterans w within a certain mile, if they're on there, that will show up in their feed. And you can, you bear, it's very, and I, I didn't waste a lot of time doing the, the actual tactile um, process of doing that because it's easy. If you're posting on these platforms, there's a boost post button. They make it very easy to take your money. They're not gonna make that difficult. It's not, it's not written in hieroglyphics. It's right there. You might even accidentally do it. Watch your wallet. Because that's what they're there for. But you can take advantage of that because you, if you know who you want, and it, it could be anybody, it could be everybody, if you know who you want, you can get to them for pennies. Now, is there, is there a post who can't afford a $20 campaign for a big event that they're doing? Anybody? I mean, I'm, my post is in heavy debt and we can do it. So I know you can do it. Our, I would challenge you to do this. You are, you, are at, you are at a place where people love the American Legion and they love the mission and they love each other. Get some photos here that tell the story. Before you even leave here, put that picture out there in your caption summarize the story that you think that picture tells. Legionnaires coming together, saving the freaking world with the capes that we gave ourselves. <laughs> if you do that, they may laugh at you, they may think you're ridiculous, but they'll get what you're trying to say. You're at a convention figuring out how to do the good things that you do better. And you're using the technology to get, to broadcast that out there so, and th that says to them, we need and want you to join this fight with us. Because less than 1% serve, right? So that's a big country to save. We aren't, we aren't here just for veterans. We're here for community, state, nation, future veterans, with children and youth, taking care, taking care of those who gave a little, honoring those who gave it all. And we need people in this fight. And and I'm sorry if I disagree with anyone who may have told you, you just gotta start knocking on doors. By the way, I'm not doing that in LA. This would be the last convention you'd see me at. <laughs> so if you can virtually knock on their inbox door, let's say that. But you need to have a, have a beautiful crafted message about what it is that you wanna say about your post and what you do. And here, for instance, you can talk about what your personal experience is at the convention, what you're getting out of it, and how you're, how you're here for the people back home. You're here sucking up all this information, all these resources and tools and comrades that you can brain trust with, and you're taking it back to your rural community. How, can, you, can you get that many perspectives on how to do things? how to do things when you're at home, you got it from here. That's a story for you to tell. You can take a picture with this person right here. Do you know, do you know each other? 
you wouldn't have known each other if you didn't come to the convention. And now that, now that you're best friends, because I've declared it so, <laughs> you can say that you met this person and you picked up this perspective from her. Thank you very much. And now my post in Montana, in Montana is better for it. It's a simple, there's stories everywhere. You don't just take a, don't just take a picture that looks good and throw it out there. Where am I at on time? Because I'm about to go deep. I have 10 minutes left? Seven. Seven. All right, because I want to leave, I want to, do people have questions? Okay, so I'll finish in like a minute. So take the overall, the overall, think of it as an overall process. It's not about just clicking the button and paying for it. Number one, you need to be ready. Because there's nothing worse than bringing someone in, enticing someone to come to you, and uh, your people aren't ready to welcome them. They don't know how, they can't call you, they can't email you. That's, that's a sad situation, you're teasing people. That's not awesome. So after you're prepared, you need to figure out why we're here. We're here because we aren't connecting with enough. We aren't connecting with enough veterans. I don't, I don't necessarily always believe we have a membership problem that reeks of we need more money. I think of it as we're not connecting with enough veterans. Therefore, because you answered the question, we are not enhancing the lives of enough of our brothers and sisters. And we're doing a disservice to our community. If that's your why, I bet you can find more and more stories that fulfill that than we need more members. We need younger members. They don't care. They're in this for something they care about. And I don't care how you tell it, whether you're knocking on their door or doing it online, they have to care. So if you're, if you're, so you're prepared, you've got your why, you, you're telling a story, right? And then, then you're broadcasting it. So this, this time that we're here talking about a way to broadcast it, uh, I thought was doing you disservice by just, I was gonna ask them to live screen up here and I was gonna post a picture and do a boost and you would have all fell asleep and not gotten anything out of it. And you wouldn't have understood how it connects, how it really connects to the membership in your post. That's what it's about. You have, to, you have to use technology, not lean on it. So it's just another way of telling your story and I'm gonna stop there. All right, anybody have a question? Thank you for being here. Thank you. Uh, we're talking about growth and growth potential. What we're finding out is an untapped source and resource are people for SAL and Essentially, that's what we're starting to focus on. Can you give me a few moments about your opinions on working SAL and then the auxiliary and family? Well, I'll, I'll tell you this first. Uh, it's of the utmost importance to me. My whole campaign was called Family 43. So it's, it's about supporting and leaning on each other in the family, right? Number two, to stay topical with doing it with Facebook, I would probably, I would probably connect with them in that uh, because they, they may have people who are already actively engaged in that, in that realm and get them to work with you and you, and I don't wanna use too much jargon, but you can tag each other in different things because the first thing I do when I talk to somebody, if, when I talk to somebody in real life, Oh, did you serve? Male or female, by the way, always ask that question first, because we're female. Did you serve? No? Oh, what about your parents or grandparents? And I know auxiliary is different, but I start there. Then I refer them. I probably put more people on Sons and Auxiliary in a week than I do Legion, actually. Uh, so if you, if you cross-train and, and do that with everybody, you get all of the family to ask those questions. I think you're gonna be great. Now how that, how that uh, you can put that in your messaging as well on Facebook. All veterans are welcome, as are those who may be eligible per their uh, familiar relationships with veterans. Then that tweaks them into asking about sons and auxiliary. 
that's how I would. That's how I do approach it. And uh, if if you have anything more specific, I can talk to you right after. All right. Anybody else? I find the fewer questions you do, the more theory you are. Now I'm down to it. Okay, a so uh, I got a question regarding people that would comment against a post, and it might be a negative post, and how do you deal with a situation like that? Um, I find them. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> you d the, what, I, what I have learned is you can't beat a troll to the bottom. So... If they're there being negative and you're trying to be more negative than them, you'll never win. Uh, depending on what it is, there's always a there's always a positive spin. If and I'm trying to think of the worst thing. My puppy was kicked and my friend murdered when I was at your post the other day. My thing would then be we're a law and order organization and we will help you take that to the local authorities to get it investigated properly and adjudicated immediately if if it you have to you, that's all you can do you can only fight negativity with positivity whatever they have I can't think and I ask you after the class tell me something somebody said and I'll tell you what I would have responded with after I waited five minutes and took out all the curse words <laughs> but I, I think that I think that that's the only way you can do is return it with positivity as much as you can and if it's political, I would, I get those two. Um, I would say we're a nonpartisan organization. I'd really, as a representative of the organization, I cannot comment on that directly. Um, but I appreciate your opinion, sir or ma'am. That's it. That's all I can do. I can't fight and argue. Anybody else? We're running out of time. Boom. Yeah, probably is. Facebook is one of the most popular platform. However, Twitter. Twitter has a lot of outreach, especially if you build dialogue and question and answer, you know, worldwide. What is your feeling or opinion maybe to link Facebook and Twitter together? I feel like I didn't know what audience was going to be here. And much like we do when we, if someone asks, what's the American Legion, some of us overwhelm people. We do this, 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 this. I don't denigrate any uh, social media platform because they all can help you reach millions of people, right? But I think for this, for, mo as for, for this space, I think Facebook can help people who can't afford or have the skill set to make their own website because the content is more diverse. It's videos, pictures, text, link. It's almost like having a website without having to pay for one. Now, Twitter, you can get it. You can talk about getting negative comments. Woo! Twitter is the worst of the internet. But you can also get into some great conversations on there. But Twitter will ignore you if you aren't constantly contributing. Unless you have somebody who's dedicated to constantly contributing You'll never gain a foothold. I, but with Facebook, I can tell people, put up some pictures, tell them how to contact you, fill out your calendar, and you're kind of good at le in, a, in a small way. On Twitter, I think you have to actively, actively push and pursue to get the maximum benefit of it. Do you agree? Yes. Uh, yes. Yep. I'm not, I believe you, sir. And you have that mustache. It's very intimidating. I'm not going to argue. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, yes, sir. Uh, Tim McLeod, Victorian Department of Connecticut. Uh, one of the things that uh, we've had a lot of discussions on was uh, recruiting new members. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of even our older members were saying, no, we need to recru recruit younger members. We need to recruit mu younger members. <clears throat> and I asked this question at one of our, our meetings, and I said, show of hands, how many people here are over 70? And quite a few raised their hand. How many people are 50 to 55? And another group raised their hand. How many are l under 45? And just a few people raised their hands. I said, so at what point is the uh, younger members? Because obviously, somebody who's in their 80s is looking for somebody 
younger than them, whereas somebody who's 35 to 45 might be looking for new members in their age demographics. So don't put an age or a, uh, just younger members on your post. It should be just a, we're looking for new members. Are you looking to be involved? Because what somebody's younger member and somebody else's younger member is completely different age demographic. So, you know, we stopped doing that just because we felt we were alienating anybody that may have served between Vietnam and Grenada or Grenada to Desert Storm. So we want to get all of them, especially after the Legion Act. So th thank you. Agreed. Hi, Jeff. One of the things that I recommend people looking at, especially on posts on Facebook, is comments. Specifically, if you're doing a post, in my opinion, this is my opinion, if you're doing a post about an event this weekend, what's the purpose of comment? To me, it's turn the comments off. Um, that also kind of controls, shall we say, a lot of the negativity. Just my thoughts. I'd love to know your thoughts, Jeff. I hate doing this. I disagree. Uh, I think, no, I, th I, I think that's, that's media. What you're, what you're proposing is media and what the platform is, is social media. So if, if you don't have the engagement, that also, if you don't have the engagement, your posts won't be seen by very many people because the algorithms take your engagement and decide how relevant it is. And not by the, not by the tone of it, but by the volume of it. So if you're getting a lot of comments, then, then it will be seen by more people. Also, they may be asking a question about it. Are dogs, can I bring my dog, can I bring my kids? Is it gonna be loud? Like, they s may have questions, and you won't, be, you won't be able to answer them. Yes, you're gonna get some negative people. I don't know how to stop that. Um, I know you can moderate questions. Uh, if somebody wants to be, there's somebody's dog. Did we say they could bring their dog? <laughs> Um, <laughs> what? He heard dog. Um, so comments are good. Moderation would require more of your time, but you should you should take the time anyway in case someone does try to flame you. Yeah, yeah, and also moderation will alert you. You can make it alert you of when you get a thing. So I would say I incur. It is my personal opinion. I encourage comments and engagement uh, just because I know that the algorithm, algorithm loves it, even though I'm kind of shy. Yes? So uh, Johnny Castro, Department of Florida. Hello. I'm a post without a home. Yep. So in becoming a member of the American Legion in 2016, after I retired uh, from the Army, uh, I immediately, for some reason, became the commander of that post. Nice. And I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> so like, like we always do in the military, we take our FMs, our ARs, and our TMs, get it all together, and read off what you need to do, what your area responsibilities are. So I went from a post of 59 members. Uh, there used to be a lot of members until the previous commander took all the money from the post. Uh, we went from 59 members in 2016 to 198 members as of yesterday. Whoop, whoop. And the way that we, <laughs> thank you. But the way that we did it was we didn't rely just on social media in that sense. You know, we, we had it, we have it out there. Uh, we have Instagram, we have Facebook, and we have anything and everything that will work for us. But the one thing that really worked for us is actually being out there in the community, mm -hmm. taking care of our veterans, and showing the community and the veterans what we're able to do for them. And hence, that's the reason why we have an increase in membership. Now, out of that 198, 35% of those are under the age of 40, and about 15 to 25% of them are either active duty National Guard or Reserves. And when I ask for a local unit, military unit, for vehicles for an event for us, or to have their XO come and speak on behalf of the American Legion, 
They, they have no questions at all. They come right out and support us. And that's what we do at the end of the day. It's just inter interact with the community, showing them that not only are we supporting our veterans, but we're supporting that community that they live in as well. Thank you. I love all of that, by the way. I wouldn't disagree with any of that. Um, being out in the community is part of your story. If you reach 100 people that see you doing the stuff that you're doing, that's amazing. If you reach 10,000 people seeing what you're doing, that makes your amazing, amazing or best. Yeah. <laughs> and I think you did know what you were doing if you went from 50s to 140. So don't sell yourself short. The boss said we're done. Thanks, Jeff. Mm -hmm.